In part one, I flew into Nevada, picked up a Jeep, got it running, drove through the beautiful Nevada desert, through Baker into California, where I met up with my father, my brother in Bakersfield. We drove into Sacramento, and that's where we pick up the trip on this video. So when I picked up this Jeep in Pahrump, Nevada, there's a lot of stuff piled in the back, including the spare tire. And in order to get my dad's stuff to fit in there, we had to clean it out and get rid of a lot of stuff and put the spare tire underneath the Jeep. Although we had a hard time locating the tool kit and all the stuff needed. My brother and I did eventually get it figured out. And this is the same brother, by the way, that does the music for all of my videos. I don't, I don't know. Should we check the owner's manual? Should we try it? Should we just try it both ways? Yeah, let's try it this way. Because I'd rather protect the face, to me, from all that crap, but, oh, really, you're going to record For this? Fortunately, we found all the tools for this. Uh, not. But we have we have a crescent wrench, which is a perfect, perfect wrench for any job. It's going up. No, not yet. You gotta crank faster. With a spare tire taken care of, I had one more issue I had to resolve before we hit the road. So before we take off this morning, there's a few things I'd like to address. I got this check engine light here, uh, which is kind of annoying. Uh, and I've got this flashing tire monitor light over here, which is also kind of annoying. So let's uh, fix that one. And we'll fix this check engine light here. There we go. Put a piece of tape on there. Put a piece of tape over. Oop, a piece of tape over here. All right, check engine light problem solved. With the Jeep loaded, the spare tire safely stored, and no way of getting it out again and all the check engine lights and tire monitoring lights taken care of, it was time to hit the road at once again, like, oh, five, very early in the morning. And I don't know why, but in part one, somewhere around Baker, this went from some kind of Jeep rescue to a travel vlog. But here we are again, traveling in the dark. In the dark. You can't really see much. There's just some lines on the road. Uh, there'll be more to see later. Uh, we'll just skip this part. We're climbing up through the mountains in Northern California. I don't remember exactly where this is at, up by Eureka or Mount Shasta or up there somewhere, I don't know. But again, the Jeep did great. No overheating, no issues. Just kept climbing and just kept chugging along, chugging along. While the Jeep was not without its issues, we stop often, I checked the fluids. Uh, just drivability was not one of the issues it had. It just kept going. Uh, the fluids were good. I couldn't find any issues. It wasn't leaking anything. The tires looked good. Uh, we made a stop by Lake Shasta to take a look at the lake. There's usually a really nice overlook, but it, it was dark and cloudy, so it was hard to see. You can just see some light reflecting off the water down below. I don't remember exactly, but this is, I believe that we're still in Northern California, and that is Mount Shasta straight ahead. So if you have or drink Shasta Cola with a picture of Mount Shasta on it, there's, there's Mount Shasta right in front of us. Just after Mount Shasta, we split off the 5 to get onto the 97 to head up to Crater Lake, and the road and conditions and weather changed drastically. So from the sun and heat of the Nevada desert, now we're up into the mountains of Oregon. And we're on top of this hill. You can see all the clouds just lay down below. It's like you're on, in a world on top of the clouds. It was just a, an amazing view from where we were. This is also where I realized the actuator, air conditioning actuator on the Jeep didn't work. And on the driver's side, it would only blow whatever the ambient air was onto my feet, mostly, and out of the dash. So it was uh, around freezing outside. And that's all I got on my feet. My feet got real numb real quick. 
Uh, the window on the driver's side wouldn't defrost because it would only blow cold air. The windshield washer fluid would spray up on the window and would freeze to the windshield instantly. So we had to keep pulling over to scrape the ice off the windshield because the wipers wouldn't chip it off and the windshield washer fluid would just keep building up. I did find some napkins left over from the McDonald's for breakfast. I was able to shove in the vents on both of them, on the, the, by the ones that blew on my feet and in the dash. And I also had a, a, a towel I put over the dashboard to cover the defrost vents that keep freezing the, the water on the windshield. Uh, that towel was actually a little bit damp and ended up being a towel sickle. It just kind of froze into place up on the dash, but it meant it didn't fall off, so that worked out good. Found out as we're pulling into Crater Lake it might be closed, but it was actually open. At least the road up to the ring was, uh, was open. The actual road around the top of Crater Lake, the rim road, was closed. But we actually got to take a, a quick tour. Uh, it was just beautiful. It was spectacular views from the top. Uh, it's, it's just an amazing place. So with the snow covering the ground, I thought this would be the perfect opportunity to test out the four-wheel drive in the Jeep. I believe it's got all-wheel drive all the time or part-time all-wheel drive or some kind of all-wheel drive system. It does have a lever you pull up on and to put it in the four low. Uh, so of course I had to try to play with that a little bit and try each one to see how it did. Of course it's a Jeep so it did great in the snow in a straight line but then we came up to a corner and I really wasn't sure exactly what to expect out of it as we hit the corner. Yeah, yeah, that last corner, that worked out real well. So let's try increasing the speed a little bit. And I wonder if we can even drift this around some of these corners. Nope, nope. The traction control definitely pro prohibits you from doing any kind of tire spinning or drifting. Where is the traction control button to turn that off? Yeah, I know this Jeep has some kind of active something four-wheel drive, so let's try to go a little bit faster around this corner, and oh no, no, we're going straight, straight towards the bank, straight, oh, that was a close one. I think we found the limits of the four-wheel drive system, that thing just went straight, almost right to the bank. So here I am pulling up to stop here, I had it in four low that whole time, which had the traction control off. Uh, I had to pull up and stop and put the put it take it back out of four low so it'd be an all wheel drive, and in all wheel drive you cannot I'd turn the traction control off and it would automatically turn itself back on, but uh, it did not spin the tires. You could just hammer that throttle and it would take off and it would not spin tires. Here we are, we made it to the summit, to the top of Crater Lake. There's a, I think there's a gift shop up there, there's a hotel, there's a few things up there, there's bathrooms, uh, but there was pretty deep snow. And uh, not, not a lot of parking, lots of tourists were up there. It was nice to walk around. Uh, I'd say thaw my feet out, but my feet were frozen. The snow certainly didn't help that situation.
And on the trip back down, we definitely gave the ABS system a trial and a workout. Uh, it, did, it did good controlling the downhill areas. Uh, I think we reached a limit of traction on the street tires that were on the Jeep. I just think they, they just could not get grip. And there's a few sections where I don't think I could have stopped even if I wanted to, but for the most part I, I uh, was able to keep the speeds down and just crawl down the hill. We made it down safely. So we say goodbye to Crater Lake and get back on the road and all the roads around there of course they're all covered in snow as well. I don't think this is normal. It's raining outside and it is raining inside. There could be a problem. We did get lost a few times trying to get back on the freeway. There's a lot of roads. There's roads with lots of snow. There's stuff that wasn't plowed. There's stuff that was closed. So there was a little bit of back and forth and we had to backtrack a little bit, but finally made our way back to the freeway. Of course, it was just as the sun was going down and it was getting dark again. So by the time we got up to Portland, it was pretty dark out. Uh, Portland's beautiful at night. There's lots of lights. There's a bridge that goes over the, some of the inlet waterways to Portland. Uh, it's, it's very nice to pass over during the day. You're, you're up very high, you get a good view. Uh, but we went over at night. You can't really see a whole lot. I tried to record what I could, uh, but just past that bridge, we go back into Washington, and there's not much to see once you're in Washington right up the freeway. And again, still, we'd stop every couple hours at rest stops. I'd check the fluids of the Jeep, check everything out, make sure the tires were good. There's nothing rubbing, nothing dragging, nothing falling off. All the fluids were good. There's no issues with the Jeep. Uh, no, no mechanical issues. There's lots of other things that are broken on it that need to be repaired. And, of course, my feet, I was hoping, didn't have frostbite because they were freezing cold. I couldn't hardly feel them anymore. But uh, here we are on the freeway crossing over the bridge. Uh, which you can't really see much where we're at. We ended up making it all the way home with uh, very few, few issues with the Jeep and it was, a, it was a good trip. I got home very early in the morning. Uh, I think I had enough time to change, shower, sleep for a couple hours and then go into work on Monday morning. Still have more plans for the Jeep. It needs to be cleaned up. There's dust on everything. There's lots of little things that are broken on it. Uh, there's a lot of things that need to be fixed and of course service. I think uh, uh, it's been almost a year. It wasn't a year. Ten months I think since the last oil change. So it definitely needed an oil. The transmission needed to be serviced. Uh, it still needs a lot of work. So look for videos for that. Uh, if you're curious as to what's going to happen or what future projects there are, uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button and look for future videos on this and my, my many other projects as well.